Africa in mining, in agricultural value addition, in uh, industry, uh, in modern health facilities. Certainly you will need um, students who will study these new fields, these new technologies and then going forward. So that's why we, we, we are very much looking for modern doctors, doctors who can do all sorts of uh, operations, who can uh, detect uh, infectious diseases. In agriculture, we need people with qualifications that will follow the value chain in, 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 in agriculture, high yield production, processing, marketing, packaging, all these types of, of, of skills are very important. In the mining sector, you need um, high students with high engineering degrees. Similarly, in, in, in road construction. In Sierra Leone, for instance, I don't think we have that many engineers who are qualified in road construction, in bridge building. So we need this type of thing. Even in aviation, I don't know how many engineers we have in Sierra Leone that are, uh, uh, have a good engineering degree in, uh, in aviation. So the demands of, of, of African modern societies are very, very wide and, and diversified, away from the old classical education, which many of some of us went through, you know, the classics and this sort of thing. Today is about ICT, and I think that's very important, about research and development. So you need uh, this sort of shift. Students, uh, modern students need to have a mindset that will shift away from the easy causes to the more practical causes that are demanded by, by businesses. I've been going more for what we call applied economic management. I've studied the economics in textbooks and everything. I will now have to understand how to apply the economics. But more so public policy. Public policy which costs across uh, political governance, economic governance, civil society management. These are the modern causes. How do you manage NGOs, for instance? How do you uh, adapt fiscal policies uh, under given circumstances? When we had Ebola, uh, the economy was almost shut down. Now you need to have a fiscal policy that will adapt to that, that will also help to revive the economy as quickly as possible. You don't find that in textbooks. I think almost all African countries today are looking for diversified education, diversified education on standards and, and, and capacity. Um, unfortunately for me, I never study here, but I have friends, so many of them who study there and I admire them. I admire the type of quality, the quality education that they got from Russia. What has gone wrong is the numbers have, have, have dwindled since 1991, after the, the, the demise of uh, the Soviet Union. We would like to see an increase into that facilities, the opportunities. We have quite a number of, of, of students in Sierra Leone who would want to come and study here in Russia to further their education. I think that's amazing. It's amazing to have 30,000 students. I was talking to the vice rector, Larissa, how many hours she sleeps at night, managing 30,000 students, different nationalities. I think that's a very big challenge. But the good thing is that, um, allow me if I still call it Lumumba Friendship University, but that's what I used to know. It's a household name in many African countries, including in, in my country, Sierra Leone. And I'm sure my sister must have studied here. I don't know that it's this university, but she, she studied in, in Russia. I hope it was through this university. But I, I think I'm very much impressed. The overview that has been given to me, it makes it a very impressive story of this university. And I only pray that I will continue with that. And the urge, the urge to spread out Russian education overseas is very important now, more so than ever before.